Hey guys, how you doing? I'm HexDSL, and today we're going to talk about the away team. Now, for my chat about the away team, I've managed to collar Mr. Cheeseness to join me. So, hello, Mr. Cheeseness. How are you, sir? Hello, I'm Will. How are you? I'm, I'm superb, thank you. Uh, now, the backstory here is that I was going to do my video on the uh, the away team, um, and knowing that, that Cheeseness was responsible for a lot of the work on the Linux patch recently, um, I, I wanted to ask him some questions and it just became apparent it was easier to get him here to talk with me directly rather than me reading you my page of notes, which I have right here. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, I would describe the uh, away team as a modern take on a Choose Your Own Way adventure book. Would that be fair, Cheese, do you think? I think this genre is usually referred to as a hypertext adventure, but that's not a very popular term these days. Um, the best way that I describe it to people who aren't familiar with that is like, imagine the dialogue sequence in, says in Morrowind, it's like that. Yeah, yeah, that's fair, that's fair. Um, yeah, I always think I always think people like can be turned off when they see a wall of text like this, they can be quite turned off by it. And it's a shame because there's like, it's in many ways, text has always been the absolute best way to tell a story. Um, so it seems odd that we spend so much time reading dialogue in RPGs that when we showed it as a wall of text, we're so put off by it. Um, but this game does do a good job of breaking it into chunks as you play. Um, yeah, I like the way that text moves incrementally, whether you, like, you set it up on the timer or whether you make it happen only when you click. Like, I think yeah, I, nice. I, I, well, to fill you guys in, uh, the away team, as I said, text adventure, science fiction, it's priced at £4.79. The uh, Linux requirements, which you should be able to see on the screen now, are oh, do, 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 very modest indeed. Oh, it's nice. Recommended <laughs> OS is Manjaro Linux. That's interesting. Do you see the minimum OS? Hannah Montana Linux. That's How did I miss that? That's gold. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't usually see anything other than Ubuntu written there, but la in the last <laughs> couple of days, I have seen Arch-based distros mentioned. Never before have I seen Hannah Montana Linux mentioned. Um, it's always God, a first, I, right? God, I hope that's a real distro. I, I so hope that's a real distro. It is. <laughs> a re it is. A real no way. Yep. Fantastic. I'm doing a video on that soon then. <laughs> um, I was not involved yeah. with picking that minimum requirement. It was a surprise <laughs> to me when I found it. Is there a particular reason they've used, they've suggested an Arch-based distro was recommended? Or was that just what they was using? Uh, I think that's because that's what um, the lead developer sort of favors on his Linux box. I don't think he does a lot of Linux stuff, but Manjaro is what he runs. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, Manjaro is a great distro. A lot of people are always railing on Manjaro because it's, it runs out of sync for the AUR and stuff. But if you're not a big AUR user, Manjaro is probably the most friendly version of Arch you can use, to be honest. Um, but anyway, that's mm. a whole separate topic. Um, so uh, the backstory is here. Um, I got the game a couple of days ago and uh, I loaded it in. Didn't know much about it. And uh, someone suggested I played it when I had a few technical difficulties on a stream the other day. Wine failed me drastically, and I started releasing my mouse whenever I get to the edge of a screen, which is the most frustrating bug ever when you're playing a first-person shooter. Um, so, so after a few technical difficulties, someone in my chat while I was streaming recommended I played the away team as I'd said that I had it. And uh, I didn't know anything about it other than seeing a few screenshots on the Steam page. And uh, obviously I knew that Cheese was involved with it, so I was like, yeah, okay, we'll play that. I didn't know I'd signed up to spend an hour reading aloud for the audience at the time. Um, that snuck up on me <laughs> quite a little bit. Um, so when I first went into the game, Tux is a playable character. You can, in fact, I've got the game loaded here, so let's have a look at the actual game. Um, so we're going to go new game here, and you can actually select Tux as a character, which is quite nice. You just drag the characters for your selection over here, and that's sort of how you, uh, how you fill out your crew. And depending what difficulty you have, depends on how many characters you have. Essentially, how many chances to brutally murder people. Um, so I'm just going to populate this with just some random characters to get into the game. Um, the initial font for the game is that pixely, um, like up here, that pixely... GTFO, eight, yeah. I think it's called. Yeah, it's that pixely, horrible 8-bit font that developers seem to like when they're making a retro game. Now, um, <laughs> I have dyslexia, right? And uh, I find it horrendous to read. I mean, this font is literally, I have to study yeah. each word. And I wish developers, if they want to have it in the game, use it for headers and stuff. But in a text adventure, it, it really shouldn't, like, it really should pop up the first time you load it and ask you to pick a font. Because even though it adds to the aesthetic, it ruins my reading experience completely. So I was ready to bail on the game before I realized there was actually um, options to change the font. And I've got this nice font. Is this mono, this font? Is it a mono variant or something? Um uh, they're both monospaced. Oh, okay. um, I'm not sure where the mono for one comes from. Okay. 
But yeah, either way, this one's perfectly readable, had no problems with this one. So if you have loaded this game, you have problems with the text like I do, just go into options, change it, reload the game. It doesn't change it on the fly, which I found out. Yeah. Because um, I wasn't sure it was working. So I'm just gonna there, there is some text down the bottom that says you need to restart for this to take effect. See, I missed that completely. <laughs> I missed that completely. <laughs> um, the game seems to be uh, two sections. The first section is flying around space and uh, selecting destinations with your ship. Uh, and then once you're in space, you can then obviously deploy your crew um, onto a mission and when you deploy your crew you get to choose the leader um, and then the medic and the engineer you know all depending on exactly what's required of that particular mission um, and you can just like add extras as well if you want i was just filling out the actual recommended spaces on my playthrough and then deploy and then the entire game then takes place through text um, you can hit play to auto play through the text or what i did what i preferred um, was i hit pause and i just clicked to make text appear, which I found a much more readable way of doing it because I could read one block and because I was streaming it, I interacted with chat and then I just clicked again for the next block. So I was constantly sort of using it as a bookmarking system so I wasn't sort of losing where I am. Um, I think I covered the gameplay loop there, didn't I, Cheese? I think I covered most of it there. Yeah. I think one other thing that's worth drawing attention to, and this comes back to like, I guess the reason why it's text, and this is heaps easier to do in text, is that the people that you bring along on your mission, they have their own skills that you don't see. They have their own traits that you do see, and they have their own proficiencies. Like they have their own, um, I think the game refers to it as a career. But uh, so if you if you stick like um, someone who's lucky on your away team, then that will influence the outcomes of some of the events that you you find. Um, and if you've got someone who's observant, then that will change the way or, or, or change the things that, that the crew is likely to notice while they're on their mission. So the people that you choose to send down can have a significant impact on how things unfold. Um, and I would say that the away team features uh, a degree of dynamic storytelling, um, which I think is the thing that makes it most interesting to me. Yeah. Um... I liked a couple of things that I, I, I enjoyed about it um, was I didn't first, like when I first, very first set up my crew, I didn't realize as I was choosing my crew, there was anything more than, I like that person, that person looks fun. I wasn't really looking at the skills because I didn't realize how much it was actually going to play into it. But sort of when you need a medic for your mission and the, you don't have a medic available, you then have to sort of decide who you're going to use, who best fits that profile. Um, I did think it was mm. interesting that I, I almost completely missed that aspect the first time, like my first playthrough, if you like. Um, so you can yeah. put anyone in the medic role if you want, mm -hmm. um, Which I and did. then certain <laughs> missions that require a medic, the stats of the person you've got in the medic slot will influence how things you know unfold. So if someone's not a medic but you keep using them as medic, will they eventually level up and like become a more effective medic? Um, I don't. The skills don't really work like that. I like. I don't think there's a medic skill that the game tracks underneath. I think there are three skills. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't want to sort of demystify some of the, the <laughs> no the game. No, no demystification. It's it's all magic. <laughs> Video games are actually magic it's as magic. far as I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it, it's it's good. And the writing will not surprise me because, as I said to you uh, before we started recording, I see a game with a penguin as a, as a selectable character. I did not expect this to be a highbrow sci-fi epic. Um, it was, I mean, some of the earlier on, I, mean, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but one of the very first missions, um, I find a room that's got, um, that has a star field across the wall, uh, which is like a map, and it's got a statue, and then it's got like quotes um, from Prometheus on the statue. And then as you go through the story, you sort of like realize that the AI, who is, sort of, you're essentially playing the part of the AI as the player, um, tells explains to people that the stars mean this and and because this means this i'm like holy shit this is some highbrow shit this is something you'd read in asimov or something this is i was like i didn't yeah, expect yeah. a game with a penguin and and a guy who obviously looks like charles xavier with an x in his name um I, you know just there's things you like you don't expect it to be this highbrow and it sneaks up on you and as a fan of sort of 70s science fiction it really sort of resonated with me early on that are like wow this is a lot this is not where i expected this is a lot deeper but unfortunately that happened to me on stream where i had to just keep going and couldn't take a moment to sort of reflect on that which was a shame but <laughs> i now know that yeah don't stream this game guys unless you <laughs> unless you've got a big glass of water and some and some novelty voices ready because you're gonna be there for a while but uh it's um that that mission is the first one in, yeah. in part of the main story oh, it's always uh, the first mission in that one 
No, no, no. Sometimes it takes you a while to come across that. So it's interesting to see you come across that so early. Um, but there are others that are kind of you know, isolated one-off things. There are others that have their own like little chains of related stuff. There's even one uh, away mission where you land on a space station that's occupied by a robot wearing a monk outfit who gets your crew to do a stage play that it hasn't finished writing the script for yet. And it's like super pantomime and stuff. See, so like it... it that's a magic totally, it goes in a bunch of different places, but it it kind of feels like Star Trek in that respect. You know, like sometimes yeah. you have got the comedy episode, sometimes you got like the the deep and heavy episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you get to the point in the game where you have to make a decision, um, you get a little bit of blue text there, and you get to. I'm just trying to find one. Oh my god, my face is covering it. Of course it is. Um, there you go. I'll resize that for the for the uh, for the people watching. You get this text here, this blue text, and you can set on this one again. I'm skimming past a lot of the finer plot details here, and I'm certainly not reading from the game because I think you know that's spoilers. But in this particular one, I get an option between entering the chamber and returning to the surface. So if I click enter the chamber there, that's taking the story in a drastically different direction. And one of the things I enjoyed through my play of it, at least was that none of the decisions are like, should I look above the step or below the step? You know, there's not like these minor plot details that are almost irrelevant. Every time you get to make a decision, you have to sort of weigh up exactly what you're doing and where you are because, like, the decisions you make always influence the entire direction of the story, not just, like, which shirt shall I wear and stuff like that. It's, it really is meaningful, which I liked. There are some decisions that don't necessarily have an impact, but they're decisions where if you were there at that moment, you would be assuming that they would have yeah. an impact on the thing. It's like, do I go through this door? And it turns out that that building's empty and it doesn't matter that you went in there. But the decision to go in there or to not go in there is is very much the kind of decision you would have to make if you were on the ground at the at the time, you know? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but even if the decisions don't mean anything or matter as such, it's nice that feel like, you feel you know. like they do. You know, you mm. you like it's not asking you in name stuff like you know ketchup or mustard. It's everything asks you. <laughs> you know, feels like it's important. And I like this way they start. I'm actually back in space on my screen there, flying around as I'm showing people the bits of the game. And uh, it is it, even the space bit's quite nice. It's you know just click where you want to go in the ship. The animation's very nice, and there's not a lot of graphics, and it is like expect an awful lot of text if you're going to pick this game up. Like you know, don't be confused about that. There's a lot of text here to deal with. But um, I do think that the, the graphics that there are are very well done and very clear, which I like a lot. Especially that penguin. Yeah, especially the penguin. Um, <laughs> I do believe you're responsible for this penguin, aren't you? I am. When I when I started working on the game, I was like, oh, I'd like to put together a character so that I can explore how the character creation stuff works because I want to do some work on that uh, later on. Um, and I made a penguin. Like I like just drew my own penguin while I was waiting for stuff to compile. And I like put in. I think the description I had for it was just penguin, 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 chicken. Um, and I showed it to the guys, um, and they were like, "Oh, this is really cool. We should we should put it in." And I went, "All right. Well, if you want to do that, I'll write a proper bio for it, and I'll give it proper stats." And um, and so we put it in the game. And then um, you know, it, it, that's kind of a nice nod as well. I think when you kind of go, "Well, this game's come. It came out for Windows first, and it's come to Linux later." What can we do to let Linux users know that we kind of care about them and and yeah. that we um, we want to recognize that that they're an important part of the audience? Yeah, a self-aware penguin um, with leadership skills is obviously the way to go there. Um, he's also into teamwork <laughs> as well. I noticed that he's a, he's a team worker and he's very lucky, um, and he gets distracted often because he's a penguin. I assume. Um, I assume because that's he, it. Because he just loves solving problems. He loves going out of his way to. I, it's funny. I wrote it, and I I basically described the way that I got involved with the project, um, <laughs> which was just that you know I saw an opportunity to help and I jumped on it, even though I've got a million other deadlines to worry about. You're like, no, but I showed I it to game. a couple of people. And a whole bunch of people went, oh, that, that feels like it's talking about me. That just this feels like it hits so close to home. And I wonder whether that's something that's common across Linux users is that we often do like to to solve problems. We do like to help people. We do like to be involved with communities. And we do like to um, to feel like we're making a difference. You know? yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd agree with that. Um, I noticed yeah. that on the, char on the character selection page, um, it, it supports multiple pages, but there's only one page of characters. Do more unlock, or are they planning on adding more later? Um, that was made with the idea of if people want to make their own characters, in the okay. same way that I made the Penguin, uh, you can actually like add your own content to the game, so you can make your own characters. Um, oh, cool. There are, at on the website, at awayteam.space, uh, slash extras. There are a couple of like community-made um, people that you can download and, oh, and stick cool. in the game. So, if you want. Could, so if I want to make a cheese to add to the game, I can. So I can actually just do that and yeah. add it to the game. 
See, that's something that might be fun. I might, but I could actually populate. It'd be nice if it would let me populate the game with people who are watching the stream, or with you know, um, like a list. Just start putting a list. That's in there definitely something. something I'd like to explore. Um, but you know, I don't. I don't want to announce any plans. Of course, yeah, uh, ahead of, of time. Yeah, it would be cool though. It would be cool. Or just like get a list of all cool. your friends and their traits, and be like, this is. This is people who I know now. They're in the game. Yay. <laughs> and that's cool. fun when you play stuff like XCOM and stuff. When oh, yeah. you know, someone on the stream dies and you go, ha, ah, you did. You know. <laughs> I No, I've, I, actually on my streams, um, I've got a habit, no matter what game I'm playing, of murdering Cancer Codes, who's one of uh, the regular viewers. I've murdered nice. more Cancer Codes to the point now where when I create a character called Cancer Code, everyone's just waiting for him to die. And he's in chat going, I demand a blood sacrifice. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it could go the opposite way, too, trust me. <laughs> it, reads, uh, it always does make you more engaged and you care about characters more. Um, when, right. When they're, you know, they're more recognisable, I think you get more attached easier. But, uh, yeah, yeah, all in all, so. all, in all uh, the game is fun. Um, I have to say, mm. for uh, the benefits of, of, of being up front, I, I did encounter a, a bug or so while I played through. Um, <laughs> do you want to talk about the bug or so I encountered, or should we just leave it a mystery? Um, which one was that? Was that where... Well, I had a character that died, up. and then he carried on yeah. being part of the narrative. And I was like, I was really freaked out, going, why won't he just die? Go towards the light, towards the light. Because, like, this guy, like, died a brutal death, and then just, like, carried on, like, helping me carry boxes and stuff, which was quite disconcerting. Hilarious, but a little bit disconcerting at the time. Well, it's game development for you, you know, like, Absolutely, sometimes... Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's a little thing, and it... it this is the, the downside of, of having this kind of dynamic storytelling aspects, is that that yeah. becomes somewhere where a bug can manifest itself. But I can say that I have a handle on the bug, and it will be fixed in the next patch. That, that's good, thank you very much. Uh, I would say that bug, though, it was... It was one of those that was more like it was like it was actually entertaining because it was one of those where the guy's <laughs> dead but he's still helping. It's like if I get any chance at all to put a life threat in situation, I'll use the dead guy because <laughs> he's already gone anyway. I have a, I, it's unfortunately, like, just help me pick, pick up this box, dude. We're just yeah. like you're but here anyway. No, just... no, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I would say though that like um, the. I didn't get to finish that mission because I had the font was driving me crazy, so I just restarted, not mm. realized it didn't save mid mission. So I didn't get to finish yeah. that mission to find out if he vanished at the end of the mission or if he carried on he being would dead. Have. He would have vanished. Looking, just... looking at the code, he would have disappeared okay, at so the end. That's that's cool. That's fair enough. But yeah, that was the only yeah. real bug I faced. Um, like there was a couple of lot of minor grammatical things, which is probably down to the way it builds, like the dynamic, as you said, dynamic content. Uh, but yeah, the whole game, I enjoyed it. I probably would have enjoyed it far more had I not been streaming my first playthrough and sort of had a better idea of of what I was doing. And uh, there's one other aspect as well, which I don't think we we touched on. Oh, carry on. Um, sorry to to no, no, bring carry things on. back, but you know um, more about this game than I do. So, so there are, there 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 outside of the hypertext adventure section where you're like clicking buttons and stuff there's this kind of resource management meta game where mm -hmm. there are three resources that you have to care about and the two that the game shows you are fuel and food so the amount of distance that you need to travel to get to planets will eat up fuel and the amount of time that it takes you to travel around the system while you're visiting mm -hmm. planets will eat up f food depending upon how many um how many crew members you have and as you progress through missions, you'll have opportunities to pick up food. Uh, you might have opportunities to upgrade some of the ship's systems, so you can increase your sensor range, or you can increase your engine speed, or you can um, increase the efficiency of your replicators, I think. So you can you can change the dynamics of how all this kind of food, fuel, uh, and time relationships work. But the other resource that you kind of care about uh, is crew members, because as we've mentioned, crew members can die, and the game is over when you have no crew members, but the game is not over until you have no crew members so you might lose a few people here and there but you can still finish your journey if you've uh if you've so only got one person left. i take it obviously you've played a lot more of this than me so you've actually played through the narrative uh can you succeed or is it always end in death in the end uh there there are endings um there are multiple endings i think there are probably let me let me have a quick squeeze here one two three four yeah, there, there are four like narrative endings with with some kind of conclusion. That's mm. not just everybody's dead. <laughs> the end. <laughs> yeah, that, that goes somewhere beyond everybody's dead, right? <laughs> okay, so we've got to look out for those. Definitely look out for those. So yeah, hopefully uh, we've told you a little bit about the away team. And I would say, beware, guys. This is a text adventure. Um, don't pick this up if you're someone who skims text because you're going to skim your way through the entire game. Yeah, this is um, this is a this is a good text adventure though, and I uh, I found the writing to be very good. 
and I have no real concerns there. Um, I know uh, Cheese Nest, we didn't say in the video, but uh, this is not Unity based. This is, you said a custom engine using the SFML framework? Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, and all the movies are made okay. using Lua, so they like um, that's the scripting language that they're using, and yep. then they're using SFML for you know all the uh, the actual engine code. Okay, well, it, the Linux version seems perfect. It doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with it that you wouldn't find on any other platform. Um, so which is, which, yeah, fingers crossed, which is nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like yeah, first class citizen, and I see a penguin, I don't see a flag character, so that's good, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that that's preferential treatment, if anything. Do I take it the yeah, penguin? Yeah, yeah. We've got it... Linux exclusive content. Like, how often do you see that in the game, right? Well, does the penguin appear on the Windows version? No, no. It's only oh, on Linux wow. version. Oh wow! I didn't even. I think we're going to pop that. it up as an extra no. that no, the Windows don't. users can download, but it, I, don't, I think it'll it. only ever be installed by default on the Linux version. <laughs> don't let them have it, dude. Don't let them take it. Um, I might, <laughs> I might treat it see if I can roll a version of the game where every single character is a penguin, all of them, every one. <laughs> maximum Linux mode. But uh, yeah, I think yeah, we've covered... Give me a nudge. I'll make you some extra penguin sprites and then you can have a, a full full crew of penguins. <laughs> full crew, only penguins all the time. They all look <laughs> look identical, unfortunately. So yeah, as I said at the beginning of the video, the game's priced at £4.99. Uh, for £4.79, I should say. Sorry, I always go for 4 I always seem to round up with everything. Um, and it's got very modest requirements. I think if you're playing, playing on a netbook or something, like an older powered laptop, and you just want something not too battery heavy that's going to play well, I, this game can be great for you there um and if you're someone like me who's happy to sit and get invested in essentially a kind of visual novel then it's definitely worth looking at and the sci-fi writing is very good it does remind me of epic 70s sci-fi which is nice so i think we've just about covered all the bases cheese um i'll when i've got more time with the game logged i'll probably do a follow-up video but uh before we go is there anything to add cheese no, I think I think that's about it. And, and like for anybody who who picks it up and finds that it's something they love, like reach out to the uh, to the development team and let them know. Uh, you know, that's that's how I got involved with development, and I I kind of am really really happy to have had the opportunity to not only discover a cool game like this, but also work on it. Like it's really yeah. I really, I must really admit, cool. like I'd like them to make like a like a, a character generator so you can export characters, and then we can just have like the entire Discord group making characters. Like, you know, just put it on the website. Like, or something. I, like I said, I don't want to pre-announce anything, um, but but that's that's stuff we're definitely hey, thinking about. We're, we're taking it as a promise now, then absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but no, I do like the idea of being able to point the uh, point the Discord group at a URL and get them to populate the uh, crew for my entire game. That might be fun to play. Uh, but yeah, definitely interesting game. I'm enjoying it. I'm going to be spending more time with it. Uh, and thank you for talking about it with me, Mister Cheeseness. Uh, if you're interested you. in what Cheeseness is doing. Um, you have what's your what's your URL? Cheese cheese talks dot net was it? Yeah, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> and at cheeseness, uh, which is spelled exactly how it sounds no. on Twitter. It's oh, that the valiant, valiant cheese. cheese, valiant cheese. Some, someone else has that cheeseness, which yeah. kind of makes um, me that, sad. The reason I said that is because I'm looking at the Discord screen now, and it says at cheeseness at the top. So I was like, oh, that must be Twitter. No, it's Discord. <laughs> obviously whoever's got at cheeseness just give it up right now all right just give hand it over right now we need that but uh, thank you for joining me and hopefully you guys will enjoy uh, the away team which is a lot of fun thank you for watching i've been hex bye everybody bye bye